guys. Hope you're well. So, four months ago, I started The Oakleaf Wine. Now, if you haven't seen that video, I'll stick the link up there. Now, after the month, it had finished and it had cleared, and I wasn't going to do anything to it, so I just bottled it up, and the hydrometer was reading 990, so we did get 12.5% alcohol in this beautiful bottle. I mean, it's got a lovely color to it. It looks like a white wine. Now it finished dry and I did want it to be slightly sweeter. Now this is due to the fact that we used grape, uh, home brewing grape concentrate, which has nutrients in there, and the express wine yeast compound also had nutrients in there. So uh, it had a good clean ferment. So uh, it happened, if I just added universal wine yeast, it probably would have finished about 1, 110, but the extra nutrients made it dry. Still not a problem. So let's pour this out and let's give it a go. It has been very, very slightly chilled. So it actually smells like a white wine. It smells really good. So let's pour some out. Not too sure what happened there. Right, let's... Okay. Carry on. So I have just poured myself out a little bit of the wine. So of course I'm going to give it a good swirl. Let's see what it really smells like. That smells really good. Now as I'm swirling it around, it's getting the oxygen in there, and oxygenating it, and bringing out the flavors. Now as you know, I leave a little bit of uh, CO2 in my wine as a preserving agent instead of using sodium metabisulfate and potassium sorbate stabilizer. Whoa. That has a really, really good wine aroma. Because it's dry and I used the home brewing wine stuff, it really does smell like a white wine. Oh, that smells really good. Cheers. So I took my time, had another glass, as you can see, and um, well, I should start off by saying this is not like the predecessors that I made before. The first oak leaf wine was a sweet wine, basically just oak leaves. The second wine I made was the epic oak leaf wine, which was super oaked, super oaky, and I used older leaves. Dry again, but not like this. This one is its own thing. This is closer to a wine you would buy in a shop, God forbid. So this is a light bodied wine. That's because of the grape uh, that we used, or the amount of grape we used. If you like a medium bodied, use two of those little grapey things. If you like a full bodied wine, of course make it over 13.5% and use four. Why not go nuts? But still keep your oak leaves. The oak leaves add a tanning taste to it and the young leaves leave residual sugars. Even though this is a dry wine, and it is dry, it has a wine aroma, it has the tannin that I can classically tell is from the oak leaves, because I've done this before, but it has a sweetness to it at the same time, which you wouldn't expect from a wine that's 990, and it is very slightly chilled to bring out the flavors. Not bad, considering we used express wine yeast compound, a general purpose yeast. Mmm. Very, very good. Very good. If you're going to make it, I would suggest try this one. The only thing you're going to have to decide is how much body do you want the wine to be. The general purpose wine yeast that I used is really good because you can use it for everything. I love using general purpose yeast. But um, this one, if you're using and going to the effort of buying the actual stuff, you know, the home brewing stuff, you might as well use a white wine yeast, maybe like um, saltine wine, uh, wine yeast, something like that. It makes a fruity, tasty little number, uh, actually imparting some flavors of the yeast. It is a really nice wine, but we're gonna have to age it because, well, it's still got a little bit of tannic harshness. 
Still a little bit, still very drinkable right now, uh, otherwise I wouldn't be drinking it. Mm. But it doesn't taste bad. The tannin isn't so overpowering that you can't drink it. It's pretty nice. All in all, I can't compare this to the other Oak Leaves wine because, well, we did it differently. But I can compare it to a wine. It is a white wine, a light body, tasty little number. So we're gonna have to come back. And I think in a year's time, I'm gonna have to save at least one bottle, uh, which is gonna be difficult because, well, this is really tasty. And I'm not gonna drink it. And when we're making the next batch, I'm gonna get to play around with it a bit more. I will crack open the bottom and see how it tastes. It'll take a while for those tannins to break down and make tasty things. Mm. But it is a really good wine. Really quite worth the effort of collecting some oak leaves. Really cheap too. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's given you some inspiration to oh, give it a go. Why not? <laughs> Don't forget to check out some of the other videos and subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing guys. Cheers. It's a good wine. So I just want to take a second to thank my patrons. Uh, they're helping me grow the channel, upgrade my equipment, all of that fantastic stuff. And as a thank you to them and for future patrons, I also do four Patreon-only videos per month. So it's pretty handy if you want a little bit extra. Um, so there's some other links to videos down below. And of course, the Patreon and subscribe button. Don't forget to check those out. Yeah.